Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, welcome back to the second part of lecture 6. So uh, we ended the previous lecture where we wanted to calculate the entropy of an exponential distribution. So a random process that is characterized by the exponential distribution. And finally we wanted to verify the claim that the entropy measure and the variance of this exponential, exponentially distributed random process are closely related. So they are kind of sort of measuring the same thing which is the variation, the variability of the random process, right? So let's begin by the, uh, let's get to the calculation part of entropy. So we have x which is distributed f of x and f of x is given as uh, lambda e to the power minus lambda x such that x should be greater than or equal to 0 or we can write x it belongs to the set uh, start begins close zero and ends on you know open at infinity right okay so uh, entropy measure by definition is uh, zero to infinity a negative sign in the front f of x ln f of x dx right this can be written as minus 0 to infinity, I'm going to put the value of f of x now, lambda e to the power minus lambda x, um, uh, log of the same thing, lambda e to the power minus lambda x, whole thing times dx. We can write this further, open, we can simplify this further as minus 0 to infinity, lambda e to the power minus lambda x, um, ln lambda minus or let's say plus ln of e to the power minus lambda x dx. So this finally turns out to be minus integration from 0 to infinity lambda e to the power minus lambda x, sorry about that, lambda x uh, ln lambda minus e to the minus uh, lambda x dx, okay. So the entropy is given as the following lambda ln lambda e to the power lambda x minus, um, so we can break these things into two entities, two different integration entities, entities uh, minus, uh, let's say, uh, plus lambda integration x e to the power minus lambda x dx. In the first integrand, I mean, uh, we can simply because lambda and ln lambda are constants, so we can simply take them out. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to do that here. I'm going to first write uh, minus lambda log lambda and then write integration 0 to infinity e to the power minus lambda dx times uh, plus lambda x uh, e to the power minus lambda x dx, okay? So uh, we, have the, uh, uh, we have the measure uh, with us now. So we go into the next page, uh, we'll, 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 uh, we'll write this down again. So if we have E equals minus lambda ln lambda, 0 to infinity e to the power minus lambda x dx plus lambda 0 to infinity x e to the power minus lambda x dx, okay? So uh, this is going to be lambda square. I'm quickly going to go back and check that my calculations are correct, okay? Um, uh, sorry. Um, so I have minus L lambda ln lambda 0 to infinity Okay, this is correct. The first one is good. 
The second one is, uh, okay, I should have a square here. So plus lambda squared um, um, x into e to the power minus x dx. Uh, and this looks good as well. So what we are going to do is we are going to now integrate these two entities separately. So I'm going to now first solve out the first entity, which looks much simpler. This is going to be minus lambda ln lambda, which is just, which are just constants. When I integrate exponential to the power minus lambda x, I will simply end up with the following. And these have to be evaluated from bounds 0 to infinity, which are the bounds of x. So I can say minus lambda ln lambda um, e to the power minus lambda times infinity over lambda minus e to the power minus lambda 0 over lambda. Okay, so I'm, I'm multiplying uh, uh, lambda with 0 in the, in the exponent. Now, e to the power minus lambda times infinity is nothing but e to the power minus infinity here. So this will just reduce to 0. So this is just going to be 0. And the next, the second component is e to the power 0, which is 1, right? So what I have is minus lambda ln lambda times uh, minus 1 over lambda, which just simplifies to ln lambda. The second integrand is a little bit more complicated. So here I'm working with a situation where I must use integration by parts. So I'm going to call x as my first part and e to the power minus x as my second part. So integration by parts. Let's write down the formula. So we have, when we have f of x, times u of x being interpret uh, being uh, you know uh, integrated as a multiplier that is given as this multiplication uh, integration by parts is given as f of x is taken as first integrand g of x is the second this is given as f of x integral g of x dx okay so this is multiplied here minus integration del f by del x times integration gx dx whole integrated with respect to dx, okay? So this is a integration by Bart's formula. We are going to apply it to this situation. So in applying integration by parts, I have f of x, which in my example is x, and g of x, which in my example is exponential to the power minus lambda x. So I'm simply going to follow the steps in the formula. So we have lambda squared, we have lambda squared times f of x, which is just x times integration of e to the power minus lambda x, which we have seen in the previous, uh, you know, case here, right here, we can write this as e to the power minus lambda x by minus lambda and this is bounded by 0 to infinity. So there's no upper bound, of course, but there's a lower bound, which is 0. So we must evaluate this part like that. And, um, and we have that, then we have the second component of integration by parts, which is this. So I have minus integration df by dx, which in this case will simply be 1, right? So del x by del x is 1 times uh, integral of e to the power minus lambda x, which we have now learnt, x by minus lambda dx. Okay, so we are going to simply follow this through. We're going to solve for the first part for which we are already aware of the bound, so we can evaluate it. So we have lambda squared. Lambda squared applies to both entities. So lambda squared times infinity e to the power minus lambda infinity over minus lambda minus 0 e to the power minus 0 lambda over minus lambda. Okay, so this is part 1, the first component of integration by parts. In the second component, I have a negative sign 
and then I'm integrating e to the power minus lambda x over minus lambda. So minus lambda is simply as constant. So this will turn out to be e to the power minus lambda x over minus lambda into minus lambda. This whole thing evaluated with the bounds between 0 and infinity. Okay, so we have and curly brackets closed. So we have lambda squared. So in this part, you have an exponent with a negative infinity uh, sitting on it. So the first, uh, you know, uh, portion of the first integral will be zero. Minus is zero, obviously. So this is my first uh, part will become zero here. Minus, we have one over lambda squared times e to the power minus lambda infinity minus e to the power minus uh, zero lambda. So I have lambda squared times zero minus one over lambda squared multiplied by minus one. So I am left with just plus one as the solution to the second component. All right. So coming back to the fact that my entropy now is nothing but one plus log of one over lambda. <clears throat> we are going to toggle to previous screen and make sure that we have it correct on this, this page. So expo the entropy measure is equal to the first component plus the second component. So this first component plus the second component. The first component was solved to be ln lambda, right? And the second component is solved to be plus one. So I have here one plus log one over uh, one over uh, 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 lambda, okay? So, um, <clears throat> okay, so I have a, I've done a little bit of a fumble. So we have, we are going to have negative or minus lambda ln lambda on the previous slide. You can check my calculations uh, again, okay? Okay, so that's it. So we have arrived at a entropy measure for the exponential distribution. So remember, this is entropy for exponential distribution. And if you now go back and look at the different moments for the, for the exponential distribution, so moments for exponential distribution that we had figured out in the previous, uh, you know, the first part of lecture six, uh, they were in the following order. So mu of x, where x is distributed exponential lambda, is one over lambda. Sigma squared x was one over lambda squared, and standard deviation was one over lambda. Hence, the entropy measure can be written as one plus log of the standard deviation. Standard deviation, which is just the square root of variance, is a uh, measure for variation in the system. And the entropy measure turns out to be a, you know, a monotonic transformation of, uh, of, of, of the standard deviation. That means we are applying a log to st the standard deviation measure. So if standard deviation is higher, then the log of standard deviation is higher and one plus of uh, you know, this entity is also higher. So when SD increases, E increases, and SD increases if sigma square increases, right? So that means that higher variance is simply an information that is subsumed into the entropy measure as well. Therefore, what we are saying is that entropy and standard deviation are directly proportional to each other to each other in case of an exponential distribution okay now uh, as a as a as a sort of a extension because you know SD is simply, you know, square root of sigma squared, we can also say that entropy and sigma squared x are 
positively related or positively proportionally related okay therefore you know we can say that entropy is an alternative measure of uh, you know variability in a random process that sigma squared x provides us a value for okay uh, now similarly you know uh, you can also sort of we can say similarly um, for a normal distribution so what is a normal distribution well you can have a random variable x it is distributed normally with mean mu and variance sigma squared we can call them mu x and sigma squared x now here uh, you know x itself is a random variable mu x and sigma squared x these are the parameters of the distribution distribution parameters and you know f of x which is the density function for a normal distribution is given as I'm sure many of you might be aware of this is 1 over square root 2 pi sigma squared exponential of minus half xi minus mu the whole square divided by sigma squared x okay and you can show you can show that exponential the sorry the entro entropy measure for the normal distribution entropy for normal distribution entropy for normal distribution is given as uh, half log of 2 pi plus 1 plus log of the standard deviation for you know uh, 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 the standard uh, the normal distribution standard deviation is nothing but sigma right sigma x which is the square root of the variance now um, interestingly you know even though uh, the variance of a normal distribution and the shape of a normal distribution looks very different the formulation of a normal distribution looks very different from the exponential distribution very interestingly the formulation where entropy and standard deviation are linked are very very similar right remember for the case of exponential distribution we showed right we showed a proof that entropy for exponential distribution was log sorry 1 plus log of the standard deviation so in case of normal distribution we have a very similar formulation and hence we can infer that entropy and standard deviation are directly proportionally related and also that the information that is contained in sigma squared x which is a traditional variance measure which provides us the variability of the states of nature that are comprised in a normally distributed random process can very well be represented by an ent entropy measure as well okay i am not providing you a proof of the exponential uh, sorry the entropy measure for a normal distribution but i i encourage you strongly to go ahead and uh, you know uh, 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 and complete this proof at your own time uh, this is a strongly encouraged assignment but it will not be graded so this is going to be left to you to uh, you know uh, 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 complete it will be a lot of it will give you a lot of clarity to go through the proofs so in case of mathematical statistics you know i have said that you know we should always work with examples and we should always look at how the data are behaving and the concepts are not sufficient but on the other hand it is also very very important to conduct analytics to, to go through proofs and go through the steps of proofs because sometimes our understanding of the real world phenomena enhances or increasing when we go through these proofs we are able to understand what is this measure really trying to get us at right that process of getting to the final step the final closed form solution is very useful if 
you want to apply an understanding of entropy or adapt it to a certain real world situation. So, I strongly, strongly encourage you to complete the proof with a rider that it will be, it will remain ungraded. So, that's it. Okay. So now, um, <clears throat> having established, having established, we have established now that entropy is a, uh, is a, you know, we can provide an ent interpretation to entropy, which is quite similar to the interpretation that we have for the second moment of any distribution, which is the variance, right? The variability, the range uh, with which a random variable can vary uh, 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 in a probabilistic uh, uh, environment. Um, we should ask, why are we studying entropy to begin with? I mean, why, why do we, I mean, if, I mean, variance could have been sufficient, right? I mean, why do we need entropy? Well, the understanding of entropy uh, comes, uh, you know, provides us a very useful philosophy of technology, uh, you know, uh, to begin with, right? It provides us an answer, why would we need technology and why do as, why do we as human race, as government systems invest so much in technological development uh, through times. It provides us a statistical, mathematical understanding of the same, right? So that is comprised in what is called as the entropy inequality. This entropy inequality also is known as the law of entropy. Okay, now uh, what is uh, the law of entropy and how does it sort of, you know, signify the importance of this measure, even though we had an alternative like sigma squared x, that's the variance, something that we are more used to as statisticians. And why should we even, you know, care to learn, uh, you know, things like entropy. So, uh, you know, let's go back to our example where you had, where we had k states of nature states of nature given by i that goes from 1 to k and we have probabilities attached to each uh, state of nature p i which go for, goes from p 1, p 2 to p k. Okay. Now, let us arrange these probabilities in a vector. Okay. So, we will arrange or organize uh, the probabilities in a vector p. So, p is nothing but uh, a k by 1 vector p1 to pk that contains this information of all different probabilities that you know, the states of nature can take. So, P is quite comprehensive. It first of all identifies the indices I 1 to K. I mean, that's an index on the probability. So, we know that we are working with K states of nature and we also know the probabilities attached to each state of nature. So, P by itself is pretty comprehensive in describing the random process that we are, uh, we are working with. I mean, we can write P we can take a transpose of p and we will then get a row vector which goes from p1, p2 to pk, right, which will be a 1 by k vector, 1 row and k columns. And now let us say this initial condition, initial condition, say initial condition p prime, that is the original states of you know, probabilities of the states of nature, the original state of the world of the universe that we are working with is transformed by an arbitrary, arbitrary, it's arbitrary deterministic transition matrix A which has the dimension 
k by k. So what we are doing is we are transitioning the world that we are in to a new world of possibilities of the, these k states of nature. So what I'm going to say is that I'm going to transition, transform P by a matrix A by simply, you know, uh, uh, such that I take P, which is a 1 by k matrix and multiply it by this k by k deterministic matrix and I get a new matrix, let's say Q. Q by itself will, has the, will have the dimension 1 by k. So Q is nothing but a new vector of probabilities. So I have new vector of probabilities. So state 1, state of nature 1 will have a new probability after being transformed from the previous state. So I'm applying a transformation or a transition matrix onto P and getting a new state of the world or the state of universe called Q, right? So uh, to see this process mathematically, if you are interested, I mean, you can look at, uh, you can actually conduct some matrix operations and it becomes a little clearer. So I'm writing out P and then I can write out A. A will have, uh, you know, its constituents A11, A12, A1k, A21, A22, A2k, keep going, AK1, AK2, AKK. Okay, so this transition uh, matrix is a k by k matrix. The matrix that I am transforming is a 1 by k matrix. So what am I going to get? I am going to get a 1 by k matrix. How do I get this 1 by k matrix? I want the first element. I will take the first row, that is the row vector, and multiply it by the first column. So I am going to get summation i, p i, a i 1. Second element summation i, p i 2, sorry, p i, a i 2. So what am I doing? I am simply taking a weighted average of all the probabilities and getting a new probability measure. I require this probability measure to be between 0 and 1. So each element of this row vector must be between 0 and 1. And secondly, when I sum all the elements of this new row vector q, they must all sum to 1. So I am transitioning from universe 1 to a universe 2, which are delineated by the probabilistic nature of how these states will occur. For my example, for let's say prices of gold, if I'm looking at a commodity price environment, and I have k different price levels that gold can take in universe 1, I have probabilities p attached to each state of or each price value or each price level that gold can take. I transition from this world to another world where the, the, the prices, price levels remain the same. So gold still takes those k price levels, but with new probability uh, measures given by the vector q. Okay, so let's complete this, uh, you know, uh, 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 vector uh, uh, q, right? So this is q. Uh, uh, prime. So, by the way, I should have had a one by k. So, I'm, I'm, um, I should have. I'm writing a transpose of, of the, uh, of the column vector, right? So, this is really just summation i p i a i one, i p i uh, 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 p i a i two, summation i p i a i three. Okay. Um, all right. So. What does the law of entropy suggest? So I have a state of world P, a state of world Q. We have started, the initial condition was P, the, the final condition is Q. So this is the final condition. So the law of entropy or the entropy inequality states that entropy inequality states that the entropy measure of state P prime A, we know how to calculate the entropy, which is a description of the variability of this random process, is at least as greater a, uh, as the probability or the entropy or the variability of the initial condition of uh, the probabilistic universe that we are studying. 
right? We can also write this as entropy of Q is greater than or equal to entropy of, of P, right? So a physical interpretation, a physical interpretation of uh, the entropy inequality is that the universe tends to seek higher levels of entropy uh, at each period or instance at each period relative to the previous previous period okay so as we as we move through time or through different universes you know the universe that that follows will have will we tend to have higher variance higher variability higher possibilities you know a greater degree of possibilities than uh, the universe that we have simply where we have just you know uh, uh, arrived from right so in a in such a world of ever enhancing ever increasing entropies technology is envisioned as and as a human intervention to slow down the process of how uh, you know uncertain the the, the future becomes uh, to present right so let's write it down so you know uh, uh, so I'm going to write down what is now, I'm going to call it the philosophy of technology, a philosophy. It's a philosophy of technology which comes from the idea of, uh, you know, a uh, 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 universe being, being explained as a random process, right? It comes from the, uh, from, from, from the statistical understanding of the world. So I'm going to say in such a world of ever increasing uh, entropies, technology or technological development, technological development is envisioned as a human intervention, human intervention that seeks to slow down, okay, that seeks to slow down the increase, increase in entropy uh, by constraining, by constraining uh, the evolving systems. Okay, so the idea is when, when I'm trying to put this constraint, you know, so mathematically, if you want to understand what does it mean by constraining the evolving systems, you know, what I'm trying to say is that is mathematically, if we want to go back to our, you know, transition matrices and all that, you know, when we transform, uh, you know, uh, 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 basically, you know, this transition matrix, which was A, K by K, to a matrix B K by K with this human intervention of technology. So B is the transition matrix with a human intervention. A was the transition matrix which would have appeared uh, naturally. This transition would be such that the new state of the world, which is P uh, times A uh, 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 versus, versus P times B, what will happen is that P times B will be closer to P relative to what P times A was, okay? So P times B is closer to P. So we are closer to the previous universe that we are transitioning from with human intervention versus, uh, 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 you know, uh, 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 when what we were if there were no human intervention. So that is, that provides you a philosophy of, of technology, uh, you know, uh, which can provide a rationale for why, uh, you know, uh, uh, the human race or the governments all across the world uh, sort of uh, are always trying to invest in 
better technology or you know uh, a higher degree of technological advancements uh, at any given point in time right so this is a, a philosophy uh, you know this this explains the world with a perspective right i mean the, the statistical perspective is not the only perspective out there but it provides an explanation irrational for what type of uh, you know happenings we see uh, around us uh, 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 you know in the world um, okay so so with that i mean there is one thing that you know uh, although technology can slow down uh, one one pointer i want to give here is that technology can although slow down the increase uh, there are mathematical proofs that it can never reverse the process right so it can only slow down the process of ever uh, expanding uh, you know entropies or the degree of variability uh, that we experience in the world okay so uh, that's about it for this lecture but i want to sort of end the lecture with uh, this idea of uh, what we are going to cover in the next lecture uh, which is spatial entropy so now we have established that entropy is a measure of variability of a random process what would spatial entropy be right um you can you know you can try and uh, think in your head what would how would entropy be then understood as spatial entropy well one of the things that will happen is that we will start to add this dimension of locationally delineated entropy so entropy with a where component so you know location wise uh, different uh, differentiated uh, variability of a random process would be Uh, 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 you know spatial entropy so where we'll begin next time is a model for a monocentric city uh, you know uh, uh, so here what we are going to try and do is use the concept of concept of entropy to explain how cities are organized around us so there is often a city center the city center has quite a high level of activity going on the population density is higher prices are higher and so on and so forth and as we start to move away from this center you know the population density becomes slower the prices become lower and so on and so forth right so the cost of living the real estate prices the population density and so on and so forth so spatial entropy will provide us a measure and a, you know a, a, a an opportunity to model how cities are often organized around us all right so that's all for today's lecture thank you very much for your attention and i look forward to uh, you know Uh, having you over in the next lecture thank you mm -hmm.